everybody, I'm Sam Kaufman with The Human Path, thehumanpath.com, and I am going to do a short video today on uh, making a liniment, making an herbal liniment, and excuse me for yelling, but my microphone isn't very good on that camera, I don't think, and so if it isn't, I'll probably overdub this, so let's just see how it goes. Uh, first of all, we're making a bruise and a sprain liniment, and so what we do is uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to just use isopropyl alcohol. Uh, and what we'll end up with is a liniment that we can put onto the skin if we have a bruise or a sprain or a strain or any kind of soft tissue injury, maybe even a broken bone that, uh, or, or a dislocation that you had soft tissue injury around that later on or, or, or during the healing you wanted to try to in, uh, increase healing, reduce inflammation and, and, uh, and help it heal. So uh, what I generally use for a liniment is just isopropyl alcohol and you can just get that, the 50% is fine. Uh, anything 50% or greater will work fine that you get, and it's pretty in inexpensive. You can get that from the from the grocery store. Um, so this is obviously not for internal consumption, both because of some of the herbs we're using and because isopropyl alcohol is poisonous. So you would never take this internally. Secondly, you would never put this on broken skin. Uh, first of all, because of the, some of the some of the herbs that we're using, one in particular, which is arnica. The other is because the fact you really shouldn't put. Uh, isopropyl alcohol on an open wound anyway, on open tissue, on open flesh, um, but rather if you're using it on a, on a wound or a cut, you generally would put it around the area, or, or, or around the edges of it at, at most, but you'd never put it directly on there and it'll, it'll, it will not help healing at all, believe me, aside from being painful, of course. So uh, those are the two ingredients really that we have, and so uh, what I did was um, about a couple of months ago, actually, this has been sitting around for a while, which is fine, a couple of months ago I put several herbs together in a formula and I will list those herbs and put pictures of them on this video as well but they are um, uh, off the top of my head I think they're Arnica and and I'll put the scientific names on there so there's no confusion but Arnica Arnica Montana is, is the scientific for that um, um, uh, black cohosh uh, for for pain and for for muscle relaxation um, juniper berry um, I believe there's prickly ash in there both as a carrier and and also for inflammation and white willow bark and um, I believe there are, I believe that's it. If, uh, oh, St. John's Wort, I'm sorry, also for pain. So uh, I'll have those listed. I have them uh, written down, but again, it's been a few months and um, I had some different formulas and I think that that was this particular formula, but it'll show up on this video. Um, so anyway, what I did was I took those and put them together and mixed them in a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, for the most part, I tried to grind them as finely as possible because the more finely that we grind those herbs, the more uh, surface area we are exposing to the solution, to the alcohol itself, and so the better off that's going to be for our, the more potent our liniment's going to be in the end. So I ground them as fine as I could, and just put them in a coffee grinder, grind them up, and then I uh, put in about, I filled up a jar, and since this is for first personal use and not a big class, I just use a, a small um, half quart um, uh, mason jar, but normally I, I make the bigger ones, I make them in a quart jar. So I put it in a jar and I filled the jar up about halfway with my um, herbs, a little more than half actually, like a half, a little past half, and then I went ahead and filled up the, alcohol, the rest with alcohol or the entire jar with alcohol. So it looks, by looking by sight, it looks like a two to one ratio. Um, that's not exactly what's going on there and I'm not going to get into ratios on this video. This isn't intended to be that, go into that kind of depth. Um, and, and explain all of the different types of things you can do for that. But this is, believe me, that particular just a uh, two to one uh, by, by volume, uh, the way that you're looking at it, that kind of a ratio generally is going to be a very potent and a very strong uh, um, mixture. And so that's what I did. Let it sit for a while and every day, uh, a couple times a day, I would shake it up and make sure that all of these, all of these herbs got exposed to the, to the alcohol. Um, and did that for about three weeks or so, and then it actually sat after that for a while, you know, so like I said, it's been a couple of months. So I marked the date that I started this on, so I know exactly how old it is. This is a liniment that's going to last me probably a couple of years, or maybe even longer. But when I'm done, I'm going to keep it in the dark, or keep it in a dark bottle. I use uh, amber bottles, generally, that I store my, my finished product in, and I keep them cool, and I keep them out of the sunlight, and um, that, that generally works. If you have a, something for a first aid kit, I'll get into that another time. But I use, um, there are certain plastics that I use, very high density prop, uh, propylene plastics that you can use that are okay to take it out and, and put it in your backpack, put it, you know, if you're out in the woods, if this is like a wilderness first aid kit, um, there's a lot of different types of things you can use for that. Even if it's going to be exposed to some heat, that isn't too big of a deal. But for me, for home use uh, on this, I'm going to strain this off, put it in my bottle, and then I'm just going to stick it in a, in a cool cupboard. 
doesn't have to go in the refrigerator or anything like that, and it'll last me plenty of time. And then what I'll do for the actual application of it is I'll take some of that and I'll put it in the spray bottle and I can spray it on. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and strain this. Now, because I'm, I like spray bottles and I like uh, using uh, this as an application method for a lot of different things, and specifically for this kind of a thing, for a liniment like this, where you spray it on, the alcohol evaporates immediately. Remember, we're not spraying it on open skin, but the alcohol evaporates immediately. We've got some carrier herbs in there that really help as well. Uh, alcohol is a little bit of a rubefacient as well, so it, it dilates the blood vessels on the surface of the skin. Um, we've got prickly ash in here. Actually, I believe there may be cayenne in here as well. I'll look up, look it up and, and see, and it'll be on the video. But um, if that's the case, that also helps as a rubefacient and also helps the um, uh, dilation of those peripheral blood vessels so that this liniment, so these herbs, soak into the skin and they soak into the tissue that need this damage that needs help. Okay, with all of the herbs that we have in here. Very effective. I could also have made a salve out of this in an oil base and put that on my skin. But um, I like liniments as well. You know, liniments are nice. They're a little, they're not oily like a salve is and they don't remain on your skin as long uh, in that way. You know, it's even a good salve. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, they, you just kind of have that oily texture depending on what oil you're using for quite a while. And this is kind of nice because it's a little cleaner feel, but it still is very effective. All right, so what I need to do is I need to take my my herbs and I need to strain them and I need to strain them through a strainer. Now a strainer is not enough because remember I ground these up nice and fine. So instead what I'm going to use is cheesecloth and because it's going to go in a strainer bottle or in a spray bottle it needs to be really fine. If you don't you'll clog these things up. So you got to have it, you got to make sure that you're straining your whatever you're using to strain it with is fine enough to get out all the powder because you don't want that powder going through here. Now there's nothing wrong with powder in terms of a salve or rubbing it on your skin that you know that stuff is very that's the strongest part of the, of the formula of the mix. But uh, if you're going to spray it again, it needs to be very clean when you put it in that spray bottle or you'll just clog up the sprayer and it won't work. So what I did is I usually you would do a four layer cheesecloth. This is cheesecloth you can get at the grocery store or anywhere. Um, and I like cheesecloth in general. You could use, um, you, if you didn't have cheesecloth and you had four by four bandages, you could use those of course. You could use, um, you could even use, some people say, you know, you can use coffee filters. I've never done that very successfully. They fall apart and you can't really squeeze them and get all that good stuff out of there like you can with something that's cloth. So generally something that's fine cloth is best. Um, sometimes the cravats or the three uh, triangular bandages, the cheap ones, are pretty fine and you can use those. Um, if you had nothing else, you could even strain it through like cotton socks or something like that. But generally you're just trying to find something to, to strain it through. Okay, so I'm going to shake this up to make sure that I get all the fluid out, all the, all the mixture out into my strainer. And I've got a, a bowl here. Now this is plastic, and generally, especially if it's, an, if it's a formula that I'm going to take internally, which remember this isn't, but if it is, then I generally only use glass or stainless steel. Good quality stainless steel, not, not the really cheap stuff, because that's not really good either. Um, but I try not to use aluminum, and I try not to use plastic. In this case, it's not a big deal, and if it's not hot and it's not being heated, it's not a big deal. It's going to go from here directly into glass, so I'm not that much of a purist. Okay, so I'm shaking this up. And once it's shaked up really good, and I know I'm going to get everything out of there, I just basically strain it out into over into the cheesecloth here. And you can see this has been sitting a long time, and you can see the little pieces of juniper berry there. It smells really good. You can smell the alcohol, but you can also smell the herbs in there real strong. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just squeeze this in. And you could just let this sit and drip, um, but I like to just, I kind of am patient, and so I like to go ahead and get this out of there as quickly as possible. Plus, remember, this is isopropyl alcohol, which means it's going to evaporate pretty quickly. And I can tell, I remember I have a, a, a paper cut on my finger that I just was reminded of as my finger touched that alcohol. All right. So if I had left, now I, I made this really purposely thick, this cheesecloth. Usually I leave myself more. If I had, it'd be a little bit easier to wring this. But what I do is I generally, if I have, I try to leave more so I can grab a hold of it and then I can just start wringing it out. You just turn it and wring it, just like you're wringing out clothes. And then what I'm going to end up doing is putting it in my amber bottle there. And that bottle is bigger than it needs to be, but I don't, that's the, that's the only size I have. So that's what I'll be using here. And this stuff that's here, right, that I'm, that's inside here, this is called the menstruum, M-E-N-S-T-R-U-U-M, menstruum. And this is still, in fact, this is very potent, this stuff in here, you could still use this. I generally just compost it, but you don't, you could certainly use it for um, a poultice if you wanted to. You could take this and put it directly on the skin as a poultice. Um, when you're doing them for things that you can take internally and you're not using isopropyl alcohol, but rather you're using grain alcohol, you can even make a tea or a tincture out of 
uh, or I'm sorry, a tea out of what's left of the menstruum too. Or you could do it for a bath, you know, again, not with the isopropyl alcohol, I wouldn't recommend necessarily, but certainly um, if you're using grain alcohol and you're making a regular tincture, tincture that you're going to be able to take internally. So as you can see, there's always a lot of fluid in there, more than you usually think there is. Okay, I've still got more in there probably I could get out, but I'm going to go ahead and call it, cut it short. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some into here, and then I'm going to pour some into my final my bottle just so I can demo the spray. Down to about this much. I put some into here. I don't like to keep my stuff in plastic all the time, so I'll generally pour stuff in and out of plastic if I have it. But um, it depends on how often I use it. Like if I'm making a, a um, an insect repellent that gets used a lot, you know, and we got bad mosquitoes, then I will keep it in plastic, of course, because it's getting used all the time. If it's something that I only use rarely, you know, once a month, once every couple of months then I won't, I'll uh, move it back out of the plastic a lot of times, back into glass. I try to use the high density stuff so that you don't end up with that plastic, you know, the, the, the plastic uh, bleeding or, or leaking it all onto it. So here we've got the final product and this is just basically, again, you know, I have a bruise or I have a, a, a sprain or a strain or whatever it is, I can just go straight directly to that now and then once I get my, my fluid in there, I can just spray that directly on it, okay? And um, depending on the herbs that are in there, sometimes it'll discolor the skin a little bit. But basically what I've got is an alcohol mixture, and the alcohol is evaporating right now as we speak, and that leaves the mixture on there, and that will absorb into my skin. Again, especially because of the rubifacients in there, it'll help it absorb into the skin. Okay, it doesn't necessarily, it feels dry, but it's still absorbing into the skin there. Okay, so uh, that was the class today on making liniments for a bruise and a sprain, and hope you enjoyed it, and um, I'll have some more coming up. Thank you.